Tienne, mon vieux. this place. My targets have been right in front of me for days, but my weapons still haven't arrived. I'll have to move in tonight, without them. We need you in Rotterdam, 47. Primary target is Rutgert van Leufen. He is the head of an international crime group that's auctioning off some photographs on the black market. Our client would prefer these photographs to remain unseen. The group works through a biker gang that Van Leufen's president of. Our client already sent a man in, a freelancer named Clace Teller. But Teller has either failed or turned. Our client sees him as a risk either way. Take him out. Van Leufen's got a meeting lined up with a journalist who wants the pictures for his tabloid. That may give you the cover you need. Get the photos, hit the targets, and we'll be in touch. We don't need weapons. Bloody Meow is just fine with just some good old-fashioned fiber wire, isn't that right? Hey guys, Bloody Meow and Hitman Contracts, and this time we have the mission Rendezvous in Rotterdam. Now this is actually the last, with the exception of the very final level, um, this is the last time we're going to see a original Contracts mission. Although, it's hard for me to say because technically, um, the next level is original, but it's meant to be a hybrid of two of the Rotterdam levels in Hitman Codename 47. Now, granted, it's kind of sad because I actually enjoy the original contract missions better. The missions to follow after, let's say, the next one are a little bit, well, it's basically Hong Kong. There is one particular gem to come up still, but uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's remades from Hitman Codename 47. And uh, I can see why they did that. Because Code Name 47 is a bit of a black sheep, and most people, even Hitman fans, won't want to play it. Although I think it's a great game, although I can definitely see where the problem is. But, um... This is a interesting level. It actually plays on the whole biker gang, the Flaming Rotterdam. I called them the Flaming Roses all the way back in Hitman 47. And uh, that's not what they're called, that's actually quite emasculating of them. They're the Flaming Rotterdams. And it's kind of cool that you get to wear like a flaming biker hood and stuff. I think that's kind of neat. So, what we need to do is take on the head biker gang leader. And uh, there's a few mission, a few, few different ways to do this mission. I'm not gonna really. I'll show you the couple that what I see. But um, other than that, I'm just gonna play it safe and um, just describe the level in general. I actually really liked this level the first time I played it because it was very. It's very dark, but also unique because it's Rotterdam. So you're like, oh, Rotterdam? Is this Hitman? You know, is this Code Name 47 again? But no, it's totally unique and um, just kind of furthers the story of how the Rotterdam, how how uh, large they really are in Rotterdam. Rotterdam, Rotterdam, Rotterdam. It's pretty cool. And I always say that I love missions that are raining and like it's just such a tranquil feeling. Um, 
Both in real life I enjoy rain, I live rather... Not always, mind you, but a lot of times I'd rather have it raining and be a little gray out with some nice gentle rain or even some harder rain. And, um... Rather than be like just regular clear sky or sunny. I like sun too, I don't like clear sky, but it just depends. It depends on my mood. Which is, you know, funny considering I, uh... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, like I said, there's no reason to explain the mission. You already heard the briefing. If you did, if you, if, if you are skipping the, the intros, that's fine by me. I'm kind of happy that I was able to bring that in for you. But, um, what we're going to do is sneak by and get to the back while this guy tries to fix this uh, broken fuse box. Because, if we syringed him, which I usually do, if I syringe that bodyguard, it would be, um... He'd probably wake up by the time I get re I'm ready to leave, and that would affect my silent assassin rating. But as you can see, we are already um, ready to take on the uh, bike leader. But I need to figure out where he is in here. Now he's coming back to get his tattoo ready, so I better just leave quick. Now if you look at that tattoo thing, one thing you can do is pick up a bottle of poison, or rat poison mind you, by in between the dumpsters from when we first entered the gates. And then you can put the poison into this little tattoo canister. Now the interface is really hard to get, so you kind of have to get it at the right angle. And then you can run outside back to the rooftop where we just were and kind of look through the keyhole and watch this lounging Rutgar get his tattoo re-inked or whatever's going on, I'm not a tattooist, by his bodyguard. Now what's funny is that we'll see the uh, poison take effect pretty immediately as I'll let you see. <laughs> he kind of just falls as soon as he gets up. It's actually kind of humorous. Now this guard thinks that maybe he did something wrong and he kind of runs away panicking. And this gives you ample time to rush in and grab the safe combination for the next part of the mission safely. But we need to head out and not worry about that and actually let him get his own tattoo. Oh, hello there, buddy. You're right there. <laughs> we'll let him get his tattoo. Um, the, I guess, non-lethal way this time around. But... It is kind of interesting that you can do that, although it's actually kind of hidden. It's almost secret in my opinion, because how on earth are you going to figure that one out? You know what I mean? But uh, we're not we're not going to take we're not going to even give this guy a chance. He is going to get it as soon as um, this as soon as he comes walking by to go to his private quarters. Now he's planning on meeting a right here a journalist who is going to pay for these blackmailed photos to screw up the client, obviously. Now what's cool is that you get a little bit of time for him to kind of enjoy the bar, enjoy the biker scene, before he plans to go up there. But um, we're not going to worry about that. He won't know what hit him. He's going to get jacked because he, they're going to realize that Rudgar Lavuven or whatever his name is, is going gonna to be dead. He's going to be dead. Now, what's interesting also is that this mission is the sole reason why it is, um, it is Hitman Contracts is not available on Steam. And with that said, pretty much on a computer unless you buy a retail version via, you know, old wear. But it is due to the biker song that plays in this level called um, Immortal from Clutch. And it's not Clutch's fault. Clutch is actually pretty cool. It's more so um, the fault of the publisher or whoever, the licensing people of the music. This might be a bad idea if he turns quick. Woo. Okay. Oh, Rutka, 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 Rutka. Go bask in your sunlight. Ah, a nice good yawn. That's the wrong move. A nice good yawn and yes. You're a pretty big guy, but uh, your neck is still the same... Uh, your your, lar your uh, larynx or your windpipe is the same thickness as most humans. So uh, I'm gonna take that gold desert eagle off your hands. Woo! Isn't that shiny? Yeah. We've got the safe combination, and we can now open the safe and grab those blackmailing photos. And no one knows the difference. No one's gonna find Mr. 
We would go off for a very long time, so no worries, no worries. And, um... We're not allowed up here, technically, so we now we need to find Class Teller, the freelancer investigator that is most likely either turned against the client or has been captured and is being uh, interrogated. So, in any case, it doesn't matter, which I like about that's like the hardcore part of Hitman. It doesn't matter. We're going to kill him either way. So, we're either going to end his misery or the other way around. I'll tell you what, I'm definitely not fit for a biker scene. I'm going to save it here. Yeah, I'm just not cut out to be a biker, <laughs> be a biker at all. But um, before I forget, this reminds me, I probably shouldn't leave Rutger um, laying dead in his office because that journalist will come as he's uh, after a timed a timed amount of time, and um, we'll find the dead biker president toast. Now, usually that's not a problem for me because I'm on my own pace, but I'm kind of, you know, walking through the levels to give you a kind of sense of the levels, not just, you know, jot through them. I mean, that's kind of not really Hitman-like now, is it? In my opinion, it's not. So, we run as less as we can. Now, obviously, there's no point not to run, like, right here or something, but, you know, when I'm going through guards and going through the level itself, you know, I can kind of walk a little bit and show off the... Ooh, don't want to move anymore. I don't like this kill, this next one coming up, because it's cool. It's a, even though it's a cool kill, it's it's. I don't like how much the guard patrols are so random down here. It's it's. I mean, it's a little difficult. See what I mean? Like there he is. Okay, that's cute. But and then there's another one, and then there's someone I think right now torturing poor Class Teller. Yeah, see. There's obviously Class Teller is um, the latter. He's being interrogated for his life and uh, this is a good hiding spot otherwise the guy will come out and turn this way and unfortunately we have to wait for this schmuck over here to also go around otherwise I can't get in there because you're not allowed down here unless you're wearing their like elite guard uniform and the big muscly guy that you see right here that's torturing him you can sedate him and kill him but you can't wear his clothes which makes sense but it's kinda weird that they do that for some people and in reality how in the hell could Hitman wear all these clothes? But like I said in Blood Money, and I believe if my memory serves me correctly, was not you better watch out. How the hell do I remember that? I was talking about that um, fact of attentional ignorance of the realism aspect. And really, there's no... Who cares? You know? I don't care. You don't care. No one should care. So with that said, as soon as this schmuck passes, and I said schmuck twice, we can... Uh, Go ahead and pay our own visit to Clyde, or Clyde, Kloss, Teller. Hello there, Teller. Let me play some interrogation with you too. Yeah. Hmm, that kind of hurts. You waiting for the power to turn off? Is that what you're waiting for? Mm, no can do, brother. No can do. Mm-mm-mm. Hey, where are these assholes at? Oh, someone's coming. Okay, I gotta, I gotta just be careful. I gotta really tie my, 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 you know. I gotta time it. Gotta time it really good. Really good. Home free! Haha! <laughs> And if you look in this, you can see there's the journalist. Oh, there's the journalist coming to see the president. And there he's dead in the bathroom. Perfect timing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, excuse me. Excuse me. So, the journalist coming into the office to visit Rutger to, to do the deal with the um, photos. What's really cool about that is that you can actually run around the perimeter at the start and find the gangster prepping for his meeting. You can firewire him or syringe him and grab his pinstripe suit. Then you can enter the gate and get searched by the guard right here. Now you gotta make sure you have no weapons equipped obviously otherwise you can't get in. But this gives you VIP access into the entire first floor of the bar. Okay. Then you can explore the bar as you please. Check out the strip club and the clutch song Immortal. 
and just chill with the bikers, or you can head straight to the bar and talk to the bartender. The boss is expecting me. Come right here, this way. He'll escort you up to Rutgar's Let's cut to the chase. Show me the money. It's right here. Count it. Count it? <laughs> if it's not all there, we'll find you and collect the rest. With interest. And as soon as he turns his back, perfect time to fire him as he's opening the safe. Yes. How about that for interest? But, you know, I don't think that would give a very nice tour of the level. And I kind of like not having to worry about running and trying to keep pace because of someone being syringed. In fact, no one is syringed in this um, in this uh, this time around. So I am free to like just walk out the front door or the side gates in this case. And you know what? I am just fine with that. I am going to walk out the side gates. I could go back in my suit to be classy, but this is not blood money. I don't get penalized for it. I know it's classy, but I don't have another save. I don't feel like getting caught. Oh, wow, you were just trying to root in my uh, cool, aren't you? And, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting mission. It's it's pretty much just two buildings, really. This building is pretty much just pointless. It's just to interrogate to get in here in a secret way. But uh, the impersonation one is quite unique, and there might be more ways, but like I said, I only keep two. So that is the man of the mission, just like that. Silent Assassin, sawn off shotgun duel. We'll never use that. All zeros, all stealth. Pretty sweet. And the overall is all zeros, and that's because I actually had a save corruption on my own fault. And so I was able to go back to the Meat King um, and get all zeros there. So right now we have all zeros. That's not going to stay that way because, like I said, getting all zeros kind of ruins um, the experience because you kind of be forced to go a certain path sometimes. So that's okay though. With that said, we're done with Rotterdam. We're going to do another Rotterdam mission next time, and that is really a uh, a glimpse into the next series of missions, which are remakes of Hitman Codename 47 in contract style, which would be quite interesting. See y'all next time.